This happened at the University of Toronto free speech debate, and I actually noticed it and commented on it before the debate took place because I was talking about intrinsic differences between men and women. And I looked around the room and I thought, hmm, hey, 80% of the people in this room are men. So I had all the women stand up and then all the men stand up. I said, look, like, here's a natural experiment. For some reason, 80% of the people who showed up to this are men. Now, everybody thought I was kind of cracked to do that. And it was a risk, but I thought, no, there's something going on here. And then what's interesting now is that every public appearance that I've made that's related to the sort of topics that we're discussing is overwhelmingly men. It's like 85 to 90%. And so I thought, wow, that's weird. Like, what the hell's going on here exactly? And then the other thing I've noticed is that I've been talking a lot to the crowds that I've been talking to, not about rights, but about responsibility. Not about rights, but about responsibility, right? What are you doing? You can't have the conversation about rights without the conversation about responsibility because your rights are my responsibility. That's what they are, technically. So you just can't have only half of that discussion. And we're only having half that discussion. And the question is, well, what the hell are you leaving out if you only have that half of the discussion? And the answer is, well, you're leaving out responsibility. And then the question is, well, what are you leaving out if you're leaving out responsibility? And the answer might be, well, maybe you're leaving out the meaning of life. That's what it looks like to me. It's like, here you are, suffering away. What makes it worthwhile? Rights? You, it's almost impossible to describe how bad an idea that is. Responsibility. That's what gives life meaning. Responsibility. That's what gives life meaning. It's like lift a load. Then you can tolerate yourself, right? Because look at you're useless, easily hurt, easily killed. Why should you have any self-respect? That's the, the story of the fall. Pick something up and carry it. Pick, make it heavy enough so that you can think, yeah, well, useless as I am, at least I could move that from there to there. Well, what's really cool about that is that when I talk to these crowds about this, the men's eyes light up. When I talk to these crowds about this, the men's eyes light up, you know, and their eyes light up. But this responsibility thing, that's a whole new order of this, is that young men are so hungry for that, it is unbelievable. And one of the things I've been talking to some of the people who've been running for the conservative leadership, well, the difficulties they have communicating with young people, because conservatives, what, what the hell are they gonna sell to young people, right? Because being conservative is something that happens when you're older. They can sell responsibility. No one's selling it. And the thing is, for men, there's nothing but responsibility. I was watching The Simpsons the other day. I watched the first Simpsons episode and I deconstructed it. And so it's really interesting. So what happens in the first Simpson episode is that it's Christmas and Homer and Marge are going to buy some Christmas presents, but Homer doesn't get his Christmas bonus. And so he's absolutely crushed by that. And that actually is a recurring theme in The Simpsons where Homer loses his job or something like that or can't make enough money. He's completely crushed, even though he's kind of useless, bumbling, laughing fool of a guy. The thing that gives that show its soul is that he's still oriented towards his family. That's what makes him honorable, is that foolish as he is, he's decided to adopt responsibility for his family and to try to bear that. He's decided to adopt responsibility for his family and to try to bear that. He's a holy fool. He's not a complete fool. And it's so interesting watching the story because he suffers dreadfully as a consequence of not being able to fulfill his responsibility. Well, that's for men. Women have their sets of responsibilities. They're not the same because they're complicated because women, of course, have to take primary responsibility for having infants at least, but then also for caring for them. They're structured differently than men. For biological necessity, even if it's not a psychological issue, and it's also partly a psychological issue, women know what they have to do. Men have to figure out what they have to do. And if they have nothing worth living for, then they stay Peter Pan. And why the hell not? Because the alternative to valued responsibility is impulsive, low-class pleasure. Alternative to valued responsibility is impulsive, low-class pleasure. And you saw that in the Pinocchio story, right? That's Pleasure Island. Why lift a load if there's nothing in it for you? That's another thing that we're doing to men that's a very bad idea, and to boys. You're pathological and oppressive. Fine then, why the hell am I gonna play? If that's the situation, if I get no credit for bearing responsibility, you could bloody well be sure I'm not gonna bear any. But then, you know, your life is useless and meaningless and you're full of self-contempt and nihilism, and that's not good. That's what I think's going on at a deeper level with regards to men needing this direction. A man has to decide that he's going to do something. A man has to decide that he's going to do something. He has to decide that. Okay, well, what's your highest value? What are you aiming for? You can decide, man. But, you know, there's some criteria. It should be good for you. It should be good for you in a way that facilitates your moving forward. Maybe it should be good for you in a way that's also good for the family and the community. It should cover the domain of life. I mean, there's constraints on what you should regard as a value. But within those constraints, you have the choice. You have choice. 
Well, the thing is, is that people will carry a heavy load if they get to pick load. And they think, well, I won't carry any load. It's like, okay, fine. But then you're like the sled dog that doesn't have a sled to pull. You're just gonna tear pieces out of your own legs because you're bored. People are pack animals. They need to pull against a weight. And that's not true for everyone. It's not true particularly, say, for low conscientious people. I mean, maybe they're open and creative or extroverted and some other things. But for the typical person, they'll eat themselves up unless they have a load. They'll eat themselves up unless they have a load. This is why there's such an opiate epidemic among uh, dispossessed white middle-aged guys who are unemployed in the US. It's like they lose their job, they're done. They despise themselves. They develop chronic pain syndromes and depression. And the chronic pain is treated with opiates. It's like, that's what we're doing. That's what it looks like to me. And it's so interesting to watch the young men when you talk to them about responsibility. They're so thrilled about it. It just blows me away. It's like, really? That's the counterculture. Grow the hell up and do something useful. Really, I could do that? Oh, I'm so excited by that idea. No one ever mentioned that before. It's like rights, 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 rights. It's appalling. And, and I feel that that's deeply felt by the people who are coming out to listen to these sorts of things too. They've had enough of that. And they better have, because it's a non-productive mode of being. Responsibility, man. That's where the meaning in life is. Responsibility, man. That's where the meaning in life is.